Okay, tip number three out of the top ten. Uh, watch what you drink. Um, once you leave your house and you get into that border crossing, there's not really restrooms. Um, especially if you're the solo driver in the car and there's nobody else with you, you can't just get out in the middle of the line and go use the restroom. So, um, for me personally, I don't drink coffee in the morning. I'm not really even a coffee drinker. Um, and I just limit what I drink in general before I leave the house. Um, I don't want to get stuck in the border that I can't use the restroom. Um, there are people out there that will admit to you that they use adult diapers in, in the line um, just to make it across. Me personally, I, I can't see myself ever doing that. Um, I just really watch what I drink. Um, I do always bring a drink with me in the car, you know, whether it's water or soda or, um, but I just limit what I, you know, I take a sip at a time. I don't actually drink the drink like, like I normally would. I just drink enough just so that I don't feel thirsty. Okay. So it is 10, 12, and I'm just now pulling into the border crossing line. Um, so it took me roughly an hour to, to get here and uh, with that, I did stop at OXO, and that's going to kind of lead me into the next one. I stopped to get my uh, my special treat of my Pocky uh, Taxis uh, queso, and I grabbed myself a Coca Light for the, the border crossing. Um, I don't usually stop every day, but every once in a while I will stop and grab something. But that is the uh, tip number four out of the top ten. Um, make sure that you pack snacks um they do sell absolutely everything in the border crossing i mean literally you could buy anything that you want um there's burritos you can buy elotes they have um chips cocktail de, de camaron um the shrimp cocktails they have ice cream they have candies and, and then besides that they sell clothing and wall art. I mean, you name it, they sell it in the line. Um, but we are on, we try to stay on a budget. So therefore, um, it's just way easier for me to pack my little lunch box. Um, just because I never know how long my day is going to be. And, you know, if I'm stuck in the crossing for three or four hours, I want to be able to eat something. So I do pack lunch every day. I pack lunch for work as well. Um, so I just pack a little bit extra in there and, and I cross with it every day. Um, it just, it definitely saves us some money and it helps us stay on budget. Okay, tip number five of top 10. Find something you enjoy. Uh, for me personally, I download uh, podcasts. I just started that the last, what, maybe like the last year, year and a half. Um, I've been doing podcasts while I cross. Um, it just keeps my mind distracted, keeps me busy with stuff. And... You know, it's not listening to the radio day in and day out. I don't know. It keeps your mind active. Um, I do that. I play games on my phone. Talk to family in the crossing. Um, it's a great time to catch up because you have a long time to talk with them. And it's just busy. Something to keep you busy that you're not going to dwell on how long you're sitting in the line. Okay, so... Tip number six of the top 10. Um, I want to talk about the vendors slash, I don't want to call them beggars because I, I really, I really feel for a lot of these people. And, and, you know, typically when my husband and I are out and about, um, we'll always help out anyone in need. My husband's the first person to, to pull out 10 pesos, 20 pesos, 50 pesos, whatever it is out of his pocket and give it to somebody in need. Um, but the border crossing they can be a little bit pushy um you're gonna have guys that are trying to jump on your car and clean your car um and some of them don't take no for an answer you kind of have to to be a little bit forceful about it um i find that crossing back into mexico they're a little bit more um i don't want to call it ballsy but they're a little bit more ballsy um they're a little bit more forceful that in that direction um than they are in the border crossing going into um, it's sad you'll see little people out there begging. You're going to see little kids begging. Um, and I would love to help each and every one of them. Um, that's kind of how I am. I'm a giver. My husband's a giver. That's just the people that we are. 
Um, but unfortunately, if I did that, I'd be broke um, to, to help every single person that, that we come across. So um, we make it a point to do good things in Rosarito. Um, if I'm at the grocery store and I see a little kid, I'll buy him a toy in, a, in the grocery line. Um, we've actually bought somebody's full grocery order right behind us. And, you know, the people are shocked. Um, we do that kind of stuff because we ha we're not rich. <laughs> By far, we're not rich. Um, but when somebody's behind us um, struggling to pay for 200 pesos in, in groceries, and that's $10, um, for us, we do that. So, yeah, you will experience the people begging in the line. Um, I get their situations. I feel for them. Uh, but at the same time, um, I can't help everyone I wish I could okay tip number seven uh, use caution when crossing typically I mean we all have US insurance on our cars but that US insurance is not always valid in Mexico uh, so most people have an add-on policy um, there are some insurance companies that are like dual insurance that they cover Mexico and US uh, with that you're covered for everything uh, if you have an accident in the actual border crossing it becomes very difficult because um, technically is it US or is it Mexico uh, I did have that problem when one of my vehicles uh, that I got hit rear-ended by somebody that was on their cell phone um, and that was crossing back from the US to Mexico and it just became a huge drama I got the guy's information but he never paid me um, to repair the damage on the vehicle we ended up paying out of pocket to, to repair it ourselves um, just because he didn't have insurance in Mexico and it was right at the border crossing and at that point neither Mexico nor the US wants to be involved in it so just use caution watch watch the people around you um, there are a lot of people that will get pretty aggressive trying to cut into the lines, um, trying to change lanes, just to try to get across a little bit faster. Um, it, it's not really worth putting yourself at risk. And these people can get pretty aggressive. Um, so yeah, just use caution. Uh, make sure you're alert, you're aware of, of your surroundings and, and what's happening around you. So tip number eight out of the top ten uh, just pay attention people in the border crossing do not have patience they want to get across as fast as possible um, they do not like if you're not paying attention um, there's a lot of times that if somebody's on their phone they're on Facebook they're they're doing whatever they're doing that the people behind them get so mad and they literally will like lay on their horn um, so just pay attention, keep the line moving. Don't get people behind you super, super mad. Okay, so tip number nine, make sure you have all your documents ready, um, whether it's your passport card, your passport. Um, if you're crossing with children under the age of 16, you can cross with birth certificates. Uh, that is acceptable. Just make sure you have all your documents ready that when you get up to the line, you can just hand it and, and pass it through. And, and again, keep that line moving through. Um, if you're searching for your documents by the time you get up there, um, it just delays the line and the crossing for everyone Okay, else. so last and final tip, tip number 10. Um, as soon as you get to the booth, don't be nervous. Um, as long as you have all your documents ready and um, you just answer the questions that they have, they shouldn't give you a hard time. I can tell you, me personally, you know, when you're first crossing, it will be a challenge. Um, I would say that for the first month of my crossing, I got sent to secondary inspection so many times. Um, they may be pulled through a separate area. Um, basically, they go through the car. You open up your hood. You open up the trunk. They search your car. Uh, for me, out of all those times that they kept sending me to secondary, I can understand why they sent me to secondary. I mean, here I am, this little white girl, um, crossing the border every day. I have no border history of crossing at all. Um, maybe on my regular passport, I had a couple crossings by plane to Cancun for conference or whatever like that. Um, but I didn't have a regular crossing history of crossing the actual border by land um, and not by plane. So, you know, maybe it looks suspicious. I don't know. 
Um, out of all of those times that I did go to secondary, two of them, they actually handcuffed me. Um, yeah, I've never been handcuffed in my life until I started crossing the border. So two of the times they handcuffed me, um, one time I was probably there for like an hour, another time, I think it was at least an hour and a half. And they completely tore my car apart, searching for drugs, I don't even know. And I am like Miss Anti-Drug, like I've never even smoked pot in my life. So the fact that they were searching for something that I'm so dead set against just was comical to me. But um, yeah, that was my first month and it was kind of torturous. I didn't ever know what to expect. I mean, I didn't know how late I was going to be to work every day. I mean, you're already dealing with a long crossing. You're in line for 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever it is, and then to go and be held for another hour to an hour and a half. Um, but just to let you know, like, that is not the case now. That was like my first month. Now, you know, after six years and I have that history of crossing and obviously um, not crossed anything illegally, not done anything wrong, I don't have any um, anything that they would not trust me for. Now, literally, I go to secondary inspection maybe three times, four times a year. Um, and besides that, that's just, you know, a random selection that they do. And it's not that, it's not that I don't have a history of crossing. I have that now. So definitely makes a difference. But don't, don't be nervous at the booth. Um, the more nervous you are, the more suspicious you look. The more suspicious you look, the the more likely are they are to think that you're not being honest. Um, so yeah, the big thing with that is just be honest, answer all their questions, and move on. Go about your day. Head across the border and go to work, do your school, um, whatever whatever you're doing for the day. 11.32 and I just made it across the border. Um, I just actually stopped at my uh, gas station I normally stop at. So it's a Tuesday and it took me about an hour and a half to cross. Okay, so I hope my tips help for anyone that's doing the crossing. Um, again, it is a challenge every day. Um, not that it's easy, it is a sacrifice that I make every day to, to be with my husband and to, to stay together as a family. Um, but for me, it's well worth it. It's not any different. You know, I've lived in, in big cities before where I've had an hour and a half, two hour commute to work. Um, it's not any different than that for me. So I guess because I've done it in the past, it's not really that much of a challenge. I know some people, it's just way too much and they can't deal with it. Um, but for me, I've been doing it for six years. It's just a part of my life. Like I don't really think anything is abnormal about it. It's just part of my day. Um, but hopefully this helps you, and if you want to continue to see videos like this, please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll continue to make some more videos that will help you out in, in transitioning your life. Um, if you're about to, to move to the border and have the same kind of life as, as what we live, um, we're hoping that we can share with you um, what our life is like and, and what challenges we do have um, but that life isn't all that bad living in, in the border and, and making the crossing every day. Not for us at least. Um, we're okay with it. So thank you again and, and definitely like and subscribe us. Thanks. Have a great day.